What's up, my pilots? Amy Pancho here. And we're back playing Dead Rising. I'm just a few steps outside of the hideout because I took a bathroom break in between videos and I couldn't quite make it back before the cutscene played. But it's no big deal. I'm going to dip back into the hideout real quick and see what's up with Isabella. Hey, girl, how's it going? What you up to? The military. They'll come, won't they? Mm -hmm. He's just like Santa Cabeza. The government wants to cover this up, too. I don't exactly see how they could. This isn't some tiny village in Mexico. This is a city in the United States with a population of 50,000 people. It'd be pretty hard to just make that go away. Nothing's changed at all. They never admit it when they're at fault. And they didn't at Santa Cabeza, and they won't <laughs> now. And Frank says, she's right. If we die here, the evidence will be covered forever. Blah, 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 blah. Basically, Frank says, yeah, we're going to have to just deal with this. And that is indeed the case. And so a new segment of the game begins. There's a 10-hour period from, mid from midnight to 10 a.m. on the last day. You just gotta deal with there being special forces around. It's kind of a huge pain. It's also kind of a huge advantage. It's it's a mixed bag, to say the least. I'll let you make your own decisions about it. But for now, I'll just say... They're definitely a threat. Uh, with their arrival, uh, about half of the zombies will be dead laying on the ground, as you can see. And as time goes on, more and more of them will be down. There's also the benefit that if you fight the little horses, they only take two hits with a small chainsaw, and they go down like nobody's business. You get 5,000 prestige points for it. It's, uh, something you definitely should consider. Un unfortunately, their arrival does change some other things in the game as well, uh, and the most... <laughs> there's a couple big ones. One of them is that there's now a helicopter out here in the leisure park that will fly around and try to kill you with its machine gun. So you want to uh, you want to avoid that if, po if possible at all. So I'm going to try and get over to Paradise Plaza as quickly as possible, despite the fact that it is really dark out here and I can hardly see where I'm going at all. Mostly avoiding the zombies by identifying their red eyes. So what's lying over here? Another zombie. Look at that. Yeah, that machine gun will tear you up. Do not play with that. Trying to get... Ah, oh, I want to get inside! I want to get inside! Yeah. So, their arrival, so it's a puzzle of forces, uh, it changes the way the game deals with your death. Normally when you die, you get a screen that says, You died! Do you want to load your previous save? Or do you... Oh god, it's like six of them. That's really bad. <laughs> a roundhouse kicked him. That was great. Just beautiful. Got to level up for it, too. Very nice. Alright. <laughs> you mastered the giant swing skill where you swing a zombie around like it ain't nobody's business. Don't ask me how that even works. I have no idea. Anyway. You, uh... What was I saying? Man. When you die, normally you get a screen that says... Uh, you have two options. You can either load your last save, or you can start a new game and keep your character's levels and abilities and such. Uh, if you die while well, the social forces are in occupation of the mall, you do not get that screen. You instead will get a screen... Uh, we don't get a screen at all, actually. What you get is a cutscene showing you captured by special forces. And then you're forced to participate in a mini-game in which you wiggle the joysticks while the special forces are not looking, and then sit still while they are looking, in an, in an attempt to escape from their custody tied up in their helicopter. Uh, this also results in a lot of time rolling off of the clock. 
something like four to six hours goes off each time you're captured. And that's actually one of the ways to get a bad ending of the game. The game has six endings, and uh, I think only one of them is the canon ending, uh, the accepted plot ending. But I think two out of the six are pretty good. Uh, the one you get when you're captured by those special forces is not uh, one of the ones I think is good. So getting captured immediately doesn't result in your getting a bad ending. It's only if you're in Special Forces custody when the helicopter arrives. That gets you ending like D or something. It's they go from A to F, and A being the best and F being the worst. I think being captured by Social Forces is pretty far down on the list. That was a nasty room. Man. Something like six of those guys right there before the elevator. Not cool. Anyway. So you have to deal with this, this cutscene where you have to try to escape the Special Forces. And then if you do manage to escape them, it's just Frank with no items. They strip him bare of all of his possessions. Uh, if so, <laughs> if you escape, you actually don't even get to keep your clothes. It's just Frank in his heart-printed underwear, and no items whatsoever. Which, even at a high level with a lot of melee abilities, no items just sucks. There's very little you can do. Uh, your best option would be to go try and go right through over to Wonderland and and get yourself another small chainsaw, and then from from there fight your way back to bookstores and supermarkets and such. But there's really not much you can do, to be honest. So I'm going to show you guys the helipad. Eh, never mind. There's nothing to see up there right now. Basically, we got 11 hours until the helicopter arrives. And the plot of the game from this point on... I don't know why I came back here. Just something to do, really. Uh, the plot of the game from... <laughs> nice picture for the loading screen game. Good job. The plot of the game from this point on is just to survive while the military is, is in occupation. They'll be... Whoa. This is never empty. It's crazy. They'll be in occupation from midnight to 10 a.m. And whoop! Excuse me, sir. And once they leave at 10 a.m., you need to hightail it to the security room. Because uh, missing the helicopter is one of the bad endings for the game. So as soon as they are out of here, you want to get on that on that ride real quick. Hey guys, come over here. Hey. Anyone there? Anyone there? Anyone there? Hello? I guess they're deaf. I don't know. As you can see, their own weapons are pretty damn ineffective against them. Jesus, they're gonna kill me. Oh, there's one behind me too, that's really bad. Oh boy. Sheesh, I'm down to one point of health. There's some cabbage up here in these boxes, I think. Let me go check. Sickle? That's fun, but not what I want. Cabbage, look at that. Om nom nom. <laughs> Tell me I don't know this game. Frozen veggies, even better. Delicious. Two blocks of health. That's just this, that's just this, that's just this, that's just stupendous, stupendous, let me tell you. Alright, I gotta go over and try and get some food in the food court here. Or rather, uh, I'm gonna go up to the blender and make a couple untouchables, refill my health. These guys are nasty, they are not to be trifled with. Special forces can wear down your health really quickly. I recommend looking around for muzzle flashes and... If you're at low health, just avoid them. Don't go near those guys. Seriously, they will mess you up, man. You saw how I went from full health to relatively low health very quickly. Uh, they can combo you rather effectively, and unlike most enemies, they don't take long pauses in between their attacks. They hit you once, and they come in for another blow. They don't, they don't hang around dilly-dallying. It's that military efficiency that makes them dangerous. I'm gonna make some some potions here. I need some untouchables to be able to survive this. So the point of the game from this point until 10 a.m., you know, about another hour real time, is just to not get killed by the Special Forces and not get captured or anything. So you want to do your best to try and 
Just keep your distance from them if you want. If, you f if you're feeling pretty aggressive and you have a high level character like I do, and a powerful weapon like the small chainsaw, it can be to your benefit to go and, you know, get in a fight with them. Assuming you have some confidence that you can win. And if you don't, just stay away, man. It's not worth it. They're only worth 5,000 prestige points each. You need to take, take that into consideration when deciding whether or not you want to go after them. Let's try and go over to the food court. How about that? Uh, whoop! Look at this. I wanted right in the middle of them. You see, they managed to take off three blocks of health off of me. You know, just seconds. Just crazy fast. You got a fifth one just then. They can shoot you and lower your health spectacularly quickly. If you're not at a high level, I recommend you just spend this entire period hiding out in the hideout. Which is what it's for, really. It's not the most exciting way to finish the game, but it does keep you safe and it does ensure that you get to see the good ending. The only thing you have to make sure of is that you're at the helipad well before noon. Uh, I, I believe at 10 a.m. the military leaves. At that point, you have two hours to just run the heck over to the helipad. And at that point, it's not too hard because the military's gone, so there's not a whole lot threatening you at that at that stage. I mean, if you can't make it then, I don't know, I don't know what you're doing. Most of the zombies are dead. Uh, most, if not all, of the zombies are dead. And the military's gone, so what's stopping you, right? The cultists all disappear after you finish the strange group scoop. I don't think I ever mentioned that during that, but as soon as you beat, uh, I think his name is Steven, the cult leader, the strange, strange cult disappears. No more cultists in the mall after that. So they're only there for about eight hours if you go for that scoop right away. Not too dangerous. The military's here for a whole ten, and although they don't appear in as large a groups, they are just as dangerous. Their ranged weapons and the fact that they can sort of combo you to death rather quickly uh, makes them... is a combination that makes them dangerous opponents, to say the least. Uh, during this portion of the game, there are no survivors to rescue, there are no scoops to follow. It's merely a matter of survival. So, that's why I say, if you want, you can just hang out. Hiding in the security room, or the hideout. Wherever you're most comfortable, just spending about an hour <laughs> sitting around doing nothing. I'm not interested in doing nothing, which is why I'm kind of running around aimlessly. I don't want to get too many loading screens, or, or spend too much time doing this. And at some point, I'll probably say, you know what, I've shown all the areas, there's not much left. I'm going to run the game to its conclusion. Because there's more to be done, even once the fuck out to get here, so... No spoilers or anything, but as you might expect, it's never as simple as it first seems. We've already uh, had Otis steal a military helicopter and presumably take at least some of the survivors out with him. So the only people left in the mall are me and Isabella. At least, that's all we can presume to know at this point. And I think, actually, that's all there really is left in the malls. Isabella and Frank and the military. Ah, get off of me! I'm going to the food court and have some wine. Yeah! So from this point on, any adventuring out that you choose to do is just, uh, for your own gratification. It's not required. If you're interested in getting some more prestige points at 5,000 points ahead, this period of the game can be pretty profitable. You're going around taking out special forces. Uh, if you keep making trips in and out of the food court, killing special forces in the area, you can get yourself to level 50 at a relatively quick pace. Although, keep in mind that when you were rescuing survivors, you could get, you know, 200,000 prestige points uh, for rescuing four survivors at a time, which is a lot more than 5,000. So you have to take into account the risks. Whoops, I didn't see them. They're like pitch black against the background. I have to take into account the risks uh, opposed to the rewards and decide for yourself what you want to do. Like I say, I'm going to screw around for a while, just kind of hang. I got the disembowel skill. I'm not sure if I want to demonstrate that. That's pretty gross sounding. 
I think I'm going to go through each plaza at least once, and then I'm just going to wait. Because, like I said, there's not much else to see. I've pretty much shown everything there is to show for this portion of the game. Uh, there's no more NPCs for me to interact with. Uh, I've gone into the underground, I've gone into all the areas. I've shown pretty much all the shops that I'm familiar with. Uh, I mean, there's one knife shop in the North Plaza that didn't show. It's just to the west of the food court. That's not a huge one. It's not so great when you have the gun shop right next door. Oh, have I shown the... Oh, I can't show the roller coaster. It's not going at night. Oh, well. If you ride the roller coaster, you get 10,000 prestige points. I think I've mentioned that before. Whoops. Excuse me, ma'am. I'm trying to go for the roller coaster here. With a powerful weapon like the small chainsaw, these guys only take two hits to go down. If you have anything less than that, I recommend avoiding them. They're pretty hardy foes. Even their own machine guns, which are pretty much the best guns in the game if you aim them yourself, uh, aren't aren't that effective against them. To be honest, these guys are really tough. And it makes sense. They go around and pretty much kill zombies wherever, everywhere they go. So keep that in mind as you pursue them. I think by the time 10 o'clock rolls around, these guys have pretty much cleared the whole mall. And I also think that by arriving back in North Plaza, we've pretty much gone on a full loop. Let me show the store that I just mentioned, the one I haven't shown yet. And then we will head back to the hideout, and I will just wait there and cut the video until it is time for us to go to the helicopter. Now, that sounds a little bit weird for me. Normally, I would play through the whole content, but there's not much else to see. This segment is pretty repetitious from this point on. It's just survive special forces. That's the whole plot. Uh, and you, like I say, you don't ever have to even leave the hideout. If you want to, you can be in the hideout when this thing starts, and you can just stay there until it ends. So over here you have Ripper's Blades, which is a knife strap. It's got some good stuff in it. So up here in the display near the front of the shop, you have katanas. Farther back, you can find hunting knives, and over here is a sword, which is pretty cool. Now, none of these are as good as the small chainsaw, but prior to that point, North Plaza is a pretty great place to be, because you have the gun store, the supermarket, and Ripper's Blades. So you can get yourself a katana, a shotgun, some milk, you're good to go. Nothing to worry about. Uh, once you've got the small chainsaws and you're making an untouchable potions, or juices, or whatever, then things, they, they become a little less valuable. So, you know, make your own choices about that. Oop, there it is. Let's see, three of them. This could go really badly. The best thing that can happen is for the special forces to get distracted by zombies. Alright, look at that. Almost full health. Maybe I should go to the bathroom while I'm here. Actually, it's not here, it's further on. Ah! I'll grab the milk while I'm here then, how about that? I will eat the baguette. Which only gives you one block of health. Don't know how that works. And we'll proceed onward from here. Am I going past the restroom already? I think I probably have. Yes, just barely. It was just back there. I was a little bit off, that's all. One, one store door away, I believe. I'm going to go back over here and save my game. And we're going to head back to the hideout, and I will wait it out until the next episode. Because I've shown the benefits of the Special Forces, and I, I intend to get to level 50 off-screen, uh, because there's a few things we actually need to do off-screen before we come in and do, a, do our hmm. second session. And there's actually a whole other mode of the game to play through before we go to our second run. So we might get 50 just by ourselves in that mode. In fact, that's more likely than not. One way or the other, I have no interest in prolonging this by battling special forces for just for funsies, considering the long-term benefit will be pretty small. And so with that being said, I'm going to take, take myself back over to the hideout and just hang out there until about 10 a.m., when the social forces decide that they've done their job and it's time to go. At that point, there'll be very few zombies left in the mall, and it'll be an easy walk 
right back over to the security room, where we will be nice and safe. So yeah, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time on Let's Play Dead Rising, when I will meet you back here in the security room, sometime a little bit closer to 10 a.m., which would be about uh, half an hour from now, real time. Thanks for watching. See you then.